7 is the most singular, the most evolved representation of this design. The iPhone 7 has been unveiled, and when Apple makes changes, consumers and competitors take note. The new devices are billed as water-resistant, with double the storage in the higher-priced models to 256 gigabytes. And then there's the decision to eliminate the headphone jack. Well, to try to make sense of this all, let's bring in our tech expert, Graham Williams. A lot of people, as soon as they heard that the, the iPhone, the new iPhone's not going to have a headphone jack, they were just perplexed. What do you think of this move? Well, this is, a, this is a big move for Apple, and I mean, they said today that it takes courage, um, and it's something that they have done before. I mean, they were the ones who removed the floppy disk from computers, they removed DVD drives from computers. So for your phone, losing the headphone jack, I think it's a, it's a downside for some people, but I think this is actually going to be the future of where we're going. If you're just tuning in, if you don't have a smartphone and that puts you in a small group, you might be wondering why we're on about uh, this. It's because a lot of people, particularly with the iPhones, like listening to music and podcasts on that device with the, the regular kind of wired headphones. Uh, there's a lot of concern these wireless headphones might not work that well, might be awkward to wear, and are going to run out of power after just five hours. Uh, it's something to be concerned about, absolutely. I'm concerned about the wearability myself. I can't tell you the number of times that my ear pods have fallen out. But what I have found is that usually it's because I've been tugging on that cable. So I think this may actually be solving a problem that I have. The five hour battery life is something to be concerned about as well, but they do have this little charging box that they slide into that will charge during the day for you. I can't tell the last time I listened to something for five hours straight. So again, this may be a usability thing that we will see. Apple has either done the research well or we're going to see an issue in a few months as people start to complain. But you know, if you're flying back from, let's say, Montreal to Vancouver, or in your case, playing Pokemon Go for six hours, perhaps, and you want to be able to listen to music while we do it, that while you do it, that might be a problem. You know, you mentioned some of the other things that Apple has done, and it, it always seems to work out for them. And people really adapt to the changes they make. But is it possible that maybe this is the time that they do something that's out of step with what people actually want? It's possible, but if we actually look at this, this isn't something new. The very first Android phone, when it launched, didn't have a headphone jack. And when we look at how we use our phones right now, we do use them for listening to music, but isn't that wire, isn't that tether something that's really the antithesis of what a cell phone is all about? You know, you really are supposed to be going wireless. So I think this is a step that is a step towards the future. Two other things, that there's so many things in the announcement, but there are two other things I want to cover uh, while you're here. First of all, anyone who's ever put their phone, whether it's a, an iPhone or any other smartphone, in a bag of rice and kind of hoped things would turn out, um, water-resistant phone. Yeah. What took so long? What took so long? Uh, it's, a, it's a delicate process of engineering something that is going to be water-resistant and reliable. Um, this is IP67 water resistance, which means that it can sit under one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. And I think what Apple wants to make sure is that they don't have a uh, something like a scratch gate or a bend gate. We might call it a water gate at this point. <laughs> um, but where their phones do become defective or become damaged from water, despite them saying that it is water-resistant. We have seen that with some other phones, where they have professed to be water-resistant or waterproof and then we have a number of users coming back and saying this didn't actually work. So I think Apple has once again over-engineered something to make sure that they're delivering on what they're promising. So good are the cameras on a lot of smartphones in the last couple of vacations I've actually left my really nice camera at home and in our last 30 seconds or so tell us about uh, another selling point I guess here which is the new camera. Well one of the things that I'm really excited about personally is optical image stabilization and that means that the lens inside moves to counteract movement in your hands. And that's one of the things that we find most often is you get blurry pictures because your hands are moving. The lens is also better. It takes great pictures in low light which is something that I think a lot of people want to do. So Apple really has been looking at how people are using that camera and they're really checking off a lot of boxes for new users. I know you're an Apple guy so you think you know we may adapt but I guess one of the things about these iPhones is they're super expensive and that will continue. And being in Canada I mean the price is quite a bit more than it was when I bought my last iPhone so I'm Which is probably last week. <laughs> well, it was two years ago. I bought the iPhone mm. 6, but I am going to bite the bullet, and I am going to get myself a new iPhone 7. What a surprise. Thanks, Graham. My pleasure.